Okay, I was recently watching another YouTuber that does uh, Linux topic videos, and he was showing some examples of like looping through and making a timer with uh, a shell scripts. And uh, that was great, even you know, it was great little demonstration and stuff. But uh, I have some issues if you're going for accuracy, and I'm not going for like top of the line accuracy, but when you're looping stuff, especially if you're running commands in between the timers, uh, like displaying stuff to the screen, you can get off on time. And so let's have a quick look at that. We're going to use the time time or timer command, the time command, and uh, it'll tell you how long a process actually runs for. So let's use the sleep command as an example. So in here, I am going to say uh, timer, and I'm gonna say sleep for one second. So maybe it's not timer, it's just the time command. Time, sleep for one second. As you can see, it didn't really sleep for one second. It slept for one second and one thousandth of a second. If I run it again, you'll see a little bit, ran a little bit faster that time, and I'll run it again. And you see we're getting pretty close. It actually, it's being pretty good right now. Usually it's uh, a little bit more, it's maybe uh, 0 0.004 or 0 0.003 off. And you might say to yourself, that's not a big deal. In a lot of cases, it's not. But if you're looping over and over and over again, and you're trying to keep accurate time for a long period of time, this can add up. Think about a hundredth of a second, which we're only going thousandth of a second here, but if you're a hundredth of a second off, that means every minute, and just over a minute and a half, you're gonna be a second off. And even though we're only a thousandth of a second here, and that's pretty good, over time, that will add up and you'll be seconds and eventually minutes off, depending on how long you're calculating out this time. And again, we're looking at just the time for sleep. If this was a loop, the loop takes time. Uh, if you um, are printing anything to the screen, that that's going to add a little bit to it, and over time, your, your timer will drift off and not be accurate anymore. So how can you fix this? How can you get a more accurate time? And I'm not talking like scientific, we're calculating out atoms and molecules and moving around specific to the millionth, trillionth of a second, but we can get a much more accurate time over time if we take a timestamp of when we start, and then we can calculate the time that has elapsed. So while we're calculating and displaying the screen, that might throw us off a little bit. That is individual to each time we loop. It isn't a cumulative where it adds to it. So let's go ahead and, and, and just start writing our script here. I will uh, make a script called timer and I will make it a bash script. Bin bash, right? So we got our shebang. Let's go ahead and make that executable so that it will run as a um, program. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a timestamp. So let's create a variable. Right here, it's going to say, basically we're creating a variable called start, and in it we're doing the output of date plus percent %s, which is going to give us the number of seconds since, is it 1971, January 1st, 1971 I think it is. Uh, and then what we would do is we can create a while loop now. So we'll say while, and we'll make this run forever. We're gonna say do and done. And then here we can say to echo, and we're gonna do a little math. So inside these double parentheses with dollar sign, we're going to echo out, and I'm just going to say this. So we're gonna run the date command with that same command error. So that will get the current time in seconds. And then we're going to subtract the previous time in seconds from the beginning of the script. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and run it. And uh, yeah, it's looping through really, really quick. I forgot to put our little sleep function in there. So I'm going to sleep for one second. You can lower that number if you want it updated uh, more rapidly than that. But here's zero, one, two. And you might say, Chris, we're still using the sleep plan. We're still looping. But again, each time it's calculating out a difference. So although we have a little bit of a delay there while it's calculating all that, our continuous time is going to be more accurate. And you know what? If it drifts off, it might skip a number in the display, but that's just because we've shifted over and we're going to keep that accurate time throughout. Let's go ahead and update this a little bit. Uh, well, let's go ahead and add a clear command. Okay, so we can do that. And now it's gonna keep it up at the top of the screen there. Of course, we can make it look a little bit nicer if you're using Figlet or Toilet. And again, yes, Toilet is an actual command you can install. It's similar to Figlet. In fact, I think they, they I don't know if they're even the same project now, um, but I'm gonna say um, Figlet. And I'm gonna give it a font. And in this case, I'm gonna say Big Mono 12. And now we should get a little bit nicer 
nicer, larger. We're getting larger numbers up on the screen. And you see, I think even there, it might have skipped the number two. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, and that's just if things drift off for some reason. If if my system is running, let's say you, you are running a regular loop and you're not doing it this way. You're doing it the original way where you're just sleeping and you're keeping accurate time. But then you do something that bogs down your machine. It can make your script get way, way off where this, if it was to bog down, let's say it was completely lock up for a while, for five seconds. When that five seconds went over, it would jump to the right time, not uh, continue where it left off. Uh, but we're, we can do better. So when we kill our script and start it again, it's starting over again. Let's say we want to keep that time. I am going to come in here, instead of just creating this variable like this, we're gonna dump that time to a file. So, and then we're gonna check if that file exists. So let's go ahead and make it. So we're gonna say if, dash F, so if this file, and we'll, I'm gonna put it in the current directory, but you would put it somewhere uh, where it would be stored, maybe the user's home directory, but I'll just call it timer dot uh, SMTP, or not SMTP, STMP for stamp, you can call it whatever you want. So we're just gonna create a text file, we're gonna say if that exists, what are we gonna do? Okay, if that exists, then we're gonna set our variable start equal to whatever is in that file. And of course, you may wanna do checks to make sure that it's a valid uh, information in there. Uh, and I should be using variables for my file name, but I'm just gonna put it in here like this. So it's gonna look at what's in that file, if it exists, and put it into our variable. Okay, if it was to fail, well then we're just gonna do our command here where it gets the time. But of course we need to update our file then. We're gonna say echo dial dollar sign start, and we're gonna put that into our little stamp um, file. So what does this do? If we were to run our script now, and if I typed everything properly, it works just like before, right? So it's, it's going through, it's, it's looping, it's calculating out the time, right? And if I was to control C to kill that and wait a couple of seconds and I was to run it again, hey, it didn't start at nine or 10. It actually knew how long it's run even though my code wasn't running. Um, so this is a great way to keep time even if your code gets shut off. And uh, I'm working out of a temporary directory now, but if I was to save that timestamp file to the user's directory, you could shut down the whole computer. You could shut down the whole computer for a year. And when you start it back up, it will know exactly how long it's been since uh, everything left because it's not counting the time that's passed. It's taking when it started and what time it is now and subtracting one from the other. Uh, so if you're looking for long-term keeping time, there's probably more accurate to it, but this is a very simple way that you can do in any programming language to keep accurate time. You can see I ran it again and we're already at 60 seconds, 61 seconds. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description. I've done videos on this before, but since someone else just recently did a video on that, and his video is great, I'm not criticizing his video at all. Uh, it worked fine. He was just showing you examples more on how the tools work. Uh, but again, if you're trying to keep accurate counting over time, you don't wanna actually be counting that whole time. Like if I asked you to keep track of how long it's been since we did something, you're not gonna sit there and go one Mississippi, two Mississippi. No, you're gonna look at what time it is. You're gonna do whatever project we need to do. Hey, what time is it now? How long has it been? We're doing the same thing with code. So anyway, thanks for watching filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And yes, I actually do spell my name with a K, if, if you were wondering. Um, and I also have a Patreon page. Links to that in the description as well as on my website. Check out my website. Lots of useful stuff there. Subscribe, comment, share. And I hope that I'll see you soon. I won't see you. You'll see me. I hope you'll see me soon. Have a great day.